first of all, what you're gonna need to do is write your name on the front of your paper. If you wanna write your name in pen, just normal writing pen or Sharpie, you can certainly do that. Um, I'm starting in pencil, I'll probably trace over mine. Our goal today is to use our name as the subject of our artwork and then we will add different lines and shapes to it to make it interesting. We're also going to write our name not just from left to right as we usually would. We're going to make it kind of like alphabet soup. So I'm going to pretend that my name is Samantha. My sister's name is actually Samantha. That has a lot of letters, so that's why I chose that name. I'm going to write it on the back kind of lightly to plan out what letters I will need. And yes, you probably know how to spell your name, but you might want to think about do you want it to be a first letter uppercase and the rest lower, or do you want it to be all uppercase, or do you want it to be all lowercase? Do you want to make that lower and do all lowercase? Do you want to do it in an interesting way? Do you want to make it all kind of italicized or diagonal? Um, so you're going to be just, this is the practice area. You're practicing how you want to write your name. On the other side, which is the front, that's where your name is, you're going to write your name sort of all over the page. So wherever you start, you're going to make your letters large. You're going to make them touch each other and it doesn't even have to be in the correct order. So I'm dividing up the space. There's a T. I'm going to put the H diagonal right here and it's going to touch both of those. And you know what? I'm out of space over here. I can't really fit anything else. So I'm going to put the last A. I'm just squeezing all of the letters in here. I'm going to put the last A right there. So now it's my, it's the name that I used. You're gonna use your first name, um, but it's just kind of all mixed up and it fills up the whole entire page. See how it goes to all of the edges? So that's what you're gonna do. You're making alphabet soup. Next, you're going to take a black marker and it doesn't matter what material you're using after this, you're gonna start with black marker and you're going to trace all of those letters that you just wrote. If you want, while you're in this tracing process or even before, you can add some interesting details to your letters. You can make them stylized in an interesting way. You can add your own little flair to them to make them a little bit more interesting if you want. I'm just gonna trace these few and then I'm gonna demonstrate the rest of what you would do after this. So I traced over these letters. Let's just kind of ignore the other ones for right now because I don't want to waste all of your time by just demonstrating. Um, this, is, this is a nice design. I really like the way this looks, but it doesn't touch the top of the page up here. So I'm just going to extend a little line up to the top over here. This is a huge space. I don't want to color all of this one color. I know that. So I'm going to just make another line. Um, down here, I, I would think that I would have to color in all of this space. Really don't want to do that either. So I'm going to make another line. They don't have to be straight lines, but basically what you're doing is you're going through and you're trying to find areas that are smaller than the palm of your hand so that you can not have to fill in a giant area with all one color. Um, I could make that end go up just a little farther and it touches the edge. I still don't really like that, so I'm going to divide that. So that's what you're going to be thinking about. You're going to be thinking about how the space is used. And when you start coloring, remember, use the best coloring skills possible. I expect you to take your time on this. Is orange a really good choice on orange paper? Probably not. And actually, in fact, marker is not the best choice for construction paper. It kind of soaks up the marker a lot faster than it, it kind of wastes the markers a little bit. We have better paper for that. Um, what I like to do is I like to color around the area first. You guys have heard me say this a lot before. I like to outline where I'm going to be coloring. 
And then I like to color in neatly in one way. So I color all vertical or all horizontal. However I decide to color, I just start coloring that way. Now, if you want, you don't have to use one single color in one area. You could, I'm gonna try a little orange. That doesn't show up. You could change colors. And we've worked with color mixing recently where if you color two colors that are next to each other on the color wheel, they blend kind of nicely. So you can blend colors together if you want. Um, you could even blend a third color in. So I went from pink to red to purple because red and purple are next to each other on the color wheel. Um, it would be better if I were using oil pastels or chalk for blending, but crayon, I can still overlap and it can still make an interesting transition there. So in the next area, you know, depending on what material you're using, you might be able to get a lighter color onto darker paper. Yeah, it shows up. So you're going to try to fill up your whole entire space with lots of interesting colors and try to fill up the whole page. Notice that around, see this example here, it has some white spaces around the edge. I think if you're going to leave any white spaces, keep them small and keep them spread out. So there, these are all around the edge. I think it would be even better if there was like a tiny little white spot in here and another little white, you know, so it's spread out. That makes it look more balanced. So your goal today is to use the letters of your name to create an interesting design and fill up the whole space and make it awesome.